Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we'll explain to you about the pound Repka experiment that was done at Harvard. What they assumed was an analogy between what happens to an object affected by gravity, an object that has mass, versus an object that doesn't have mass, for example, a photon. But they said that if space, or if gravity is caused by the warping of space, then it shouldn't make any difference if an object has mass or doesn't have mass. Both of them should be affected by gravity. Of course, that's what Einstein predicted, and no one believed him at the time, but now, of course, we know that he was absolutely correct. And this experiment proved it. Of course, there were other proofs before, the one that he did in 2019, not, yeah, 2019, no, oh, not 2019, that was a year ago. He wasn't alive then. I'm talking about 1919, a century earlier, where through the use of a total solar eclipse, he showed that light bent around the sun. And so therefore, he said that light was affected by gravity, even though light didn't have any mass. And it's, of course, because space is warped, and that's why life simply follows the warping of space. So the experiment here actually proved, and I believe the experiment was done back in 1960, but I don't quite, I'm not 100% sure the, the year. But what they did was as follows. Assuming that you go up on top of a tower and you drop an object, you know that the object has potential energy at the top, and when you drop the object, it will convert that potential energy into kinetic energy. Essentially, you lose the potential energy and you gain kinetic energy. So, the idea was that if you drop a photon from a height, as it comes down, it will lose potential energy and convert that to kinetic energy. In other words, the energy the photons have at the bottom should be greater than the energy the photons have at the top. And the drop was 22.6 meters, which is about 70 feet or so. All right. So, how did they do that? Well, they used a very high energy emitter, photon, and the energy was roughly X-ray, gamma ray type of photon. And notice, how do you determine the equivalent mass of a photon? So what they said was, since E is equal to mc squared, m should be equal to the energy divided by c squared. And the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, the rate at which the photon goes up and down. You take that product divided by c squared, and that gives you the equivalent mass of a photon, even of course a photon doesn't have mass. And then if you think of the change in energy as being equal to mgh, the equivalent mass times g times h, you can then take the energy divided by c squared, or hf divided by c squared, or if you want to convert from f, the frequency, to the speed of light divided by the wavelength, you can then write it as Planck's constant divided by c divided by lambda. Any one, any one of those equations will work. And so then you can say that the change in the energy of the photon falling from a height of 22.6 meters is equal to the mass, times the acceleration to gravity, times the height. And of course, h would be the height from the top of the tower back down to the bottom of the tower. Now, they went both ways. They emitted photons from the top down to the bottom. They emitted photons from the bottom back to the top. Of course, at that point, they will lose energy. And they took the total difference to figure that out to make sure that it matched what they were expecting. And the results were amazing. They were like within less than 1% of the expected results. So there was a sounding success. So if you want to plug this in, the change in energy is Planck's constant divided by the speed of light divided by the wavelength of these photons. Now this is 86 nanometers. So those are very small wavelengths because they were very high energy photons. The energy of the photons was 14,400 electron volts. And then use the acceleration due to gravity then the height difference, 22.6 meters, and the difference in energy in electron volts was 3.5 times 10 to minus 11 electron volts. Now that's not a lot of difference in energy, so they did it both ways so that the sum would be double that, and then they took the ratio of the change in the energy divided by the original energy. The photons had this much energy, this was the change, so this was the ratio, then they doubled that ratio by taking it up and down, gives you a better result, and when they then compared that, the expected value was right around 5 times 10 to the minus 15. It was an amazing success, very, very close to the expected result. So what does that prove? Well, for one thing, it proves that space is warped by the presence of mass. 
the warping of that space affects objects like everyday objects that we're used to. It affects us. We're being attracted to the Earth for that reason. But it also affects electromagnetic radiation. As electromagnetic radiation is trying to get away from a gravitational field, the field pulls on it. Well, it can't really pull on it because remember, the equation that Newton discovered for the force of gravity is equal to the constant, the gravitational constant, times the product of the two masses divided by the distance squared. This is the universal equation of gravity. And in order for there to be a force, there must be two objects with mass. Since this is just a pseudo mass, it's an equivalent mass, but not a real mass, the force between light and any object should be zero. But we realize that's not the case. Einstein, of course, realized that first. It's not the case. There is a equivalent force that pulls on light and as the light tries to escape energy is lost as the light comes down towards the gravitational field then it gains energy it converts that potential energy into that equivalent kinetic energy so there's a gain in energy or a loss in energy depending upon which way you go due purely due to the fact that space is warped due to the presence of mass creating gravitational force at least for light it's not really a force it's simply a warping of space. So there's another proof that there's something to space, some fabric of space that's affected by the presence of mass, and in turn, that affects electromagnetic radiation going through it. There's an interaction between space and EM waves. We just have to figure out how it actually works. What's the mechanics of it? That's what we're after. We're trying to figure that out. What do you think? Interesting. <laughs> it's a very interesting experiment. And it worked like a charm. Being able to measure these small changes, it's absolutely amazing that they did that. All right, on to the next experiment.